Hey fam, how y'all doing today? Welcome back to History Highlights with Laney. In this video, I will highlight the origin of Black Wall Street. Ottawa W. Gurley, aka O.W., was a turn of the 20th century black educator, entrepreneur, and landowner who was born to former enslaved Africans in 1889 after resigning from a position he held with the Governor Cleveland Presidential Administration. O.W. moved from his home of Arkansas to Perry, Oklahoma in order to participate in the Oklahoma land grab of 1889 with his wife, Emma. He later relocated to Tulsa to seize economic opportunities resulting from the city's multiracial population boom. Once there, O.W. purchased a 40-acre tree of undeveloped land where he built a grocery store on a dirt road that ran just north of the train track in the city. He later forged a partnership with fellow black businessman John the Baptist <laughs> Stratford, a.k.a. J.B., with whom he shared a general distrust of white people. Both men chose to go by their initials instead of their first names. This action was a form of silent protest because men in the South were customarily addressed by their surnames, while boys were called by their first names. Sadly, white men often addressed black men by their first name as a form of emasculation. By using their initials, O.W. and J.B. circumvented this practice. The key takeaways, O.W. was a black ed educator, entrepreneur, and landowner who was born of former enslaved Africans. At the beginning of the 20th century, he bought 40 acres of land in Tulsa. He forged a partnership with John the Baptist Stratford. The two developed an all-black district in Tulsa, which became known as Greenwood. When hundreds of African Americans moved to Greenwood for the oil boom, the two became increasingly wealthy. Greenwood's prosperity became legendary in Black America, with Booker T. Washington dubbing it as Negro Wall Street. After O.W. built several square, two-story brick boarding houses near his grocery store, he called the street in which his structures sat Greenwood Avenue. After the Mississippi town from which many of his early residents hail. Before long, the entire area became known as Greenwood, which soon became the site for a school as well as an African Methodist Episcopal Church. But O.W.'s crowning project was the Girly Hotel, whose high quality gravel that of the finest white hotels in the state. Hundreds of African Americans went to Greenwood for the oil boom. O.W. and J.B. became increasingly wealthy. 
with OW boasting a reported net worth of $150,000. Value today, $3.6 million. OW was also appointed sheriff deputy of the city of Tulsa, where he was responsible for policing the black population in Greenwood. But O.W. became increasingly cozy with the white establishment. Many members of Tulsa's black community began to resent him. In fact, the Black Star newspaper, its militant black publisher, referred to O.W. as the king of little Africa. Nevertheless, white developers began to emulate O.W. and J.B. by purchasing plots of land located north of the railroad tracks, then selling plots back to members of the black community. By 1905, a black doctor and a black dentist had lunch practices there. The creation of more schools, several hardware stores, and a Baptist church followed soon. Throughout this time, segregation was increasing as blacks converged to the north side of the train tracks while white converged to the south side. When the Oklahoma Territory achieved statehood in 1907, segregationist Democrats led by white supremacists passed laws that criminalized interracial marriage and prohibited blacks from obtaining high wage jobs. These injustices affirmed O.W. and J.B.'s decision to establish a black-centric community where black men and women were shielded from racial hostilities. If white people made threatening racist remarks, Greenwood's black residents often responded aggressively. For example, in 1909, J.B. was walking along Greenwood Avenue when a white delivery man uttered a racial insult, prompting J.B. to throw the man to the ground scrattle him and punch his face until he was bloody. JB was criminally charged for this beating, but was acquitted. Greenwood did prosper, mainly because residents kept their money in the community of blacks. This helped black residents to attain high-paying labor jobs as maids, chauffeurs, gardeners, janitors, shoe shiners, and porters. These workers often earn enough money to send their children to universities like Columbia Law School, the Hampton Institute, the Tuskegee Institute, Spelman College and Atlanta University, which positioned them to secure white collar jobs after graduation. Yes, the Greenwood District became legendary in Black America. So there you have it, a little bit of origin of Black Wall Street, original name, Negro. Wall Street, dubbed by Booker T. Washington. Be well, stay safe, and stay in peace, not pieces. Subscribe and hit that bell so you will know every time I upload a video. Word of the year, peace, peace. Deuces, see you soon. Love y'all, fam.